Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you're not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. Hey guys, today is Thursday, Thursday, May 2nd, and the energies in the day adds up or reduce the number six vibration. If today is your birthday, happy birthday. So it feels good to be in May. Um, we haven't gotten deeper into May yet for me to see the energies and stuff like that but it just feels good to be in May. That's just the feeling that came over me as I was saying today is May 2nd. Not that April was bad at all. It's just like I've mentioned in past videos, um, April just kind of felt like under the influence to a certain extent. Like I said, I could, you know, everything looks the same, but it just felt different. And I think that had a lot to do with the whole Mercury retrograde energy. For the Mercury retrograde energy, I didn't have anything crazy happen where I made major mistakes or anything like that. If anything, good things happened to me um, as I did some traveling and had to get some stuff done and things worked out in my favor. So, you know, I didn't have any struggle with the Mercury retrograde energy. It was actually beneficial, but once the energy went direct, I could feel it. It's the way how I would explain it for me is like going on vacation and leaving lights running in your space, like in your home. It's like there's energy there that's being used up. So for me, with the whole retrograde energy, it just felt like in the back of my mind or like there was energy being used that I was unaware of to a certain extent or now that the energies are direct there just feels like more clarity it feel things feel more clear um during the whole april month maybe a lot of us experience downloads and different things like that where i think of like a download with your cell phone like your cell phone gets a download and for me i won't notice that my phone has new downloads until maybe I go online and certain people are using certain emojis that I didn't even know existed. Like it wasn't until someone shared a big old fly emoji on Patreon. Um, I realized, oh my God, flies, they have fly emojis and it looks so real and low key. Like I don't like big old flies, but it was like, okay, wow, this is here. So I feel like something similar within our energies where it's like, you know, some of us got downloads and certain things like that. And we won't realize that we gain certain knowledge and certain, for me, like I mentioned in a past video, a download is like a package is dropped off and you might not even realize that it's dropped off. And like the emoji example, it's not until you're in the midst of something or you enter into a new space or something happens and you realize that there's this knowledge there, there's this awareness there. But for me throughout the retrograde phase, there was a lot of reflecting. So even moments when I felt like I was in the moment, there was a part of my mind that wasn't in the moment that was still reflecting on other things. Because as someone um, commented on one of the past videos, there were moments when you felt like you were completely clear and you know exactly what to do. And then there were moments when you're like, I don't know what to do. And then there's moments when you're confused and there's moments when you feel confident. It just felt like an up and down of emotions and moments of clarity and then not feeling so clear. So for me moving forward and now in the month of May, it's like, it just, I just feel more organized, like mentally organized. Plus I had a busy April also. So, you know, I'm sure that played a part in it. But when, when it comes to today's energy, 
Today's energy is ruled by Jupiter because it's Thursday and the energies in the day adds up and reduce the number six vibration. The number six is ruled by Venus and the day is the second and the number two is ruled by Mars. So overall, when it comes to the energies in today, um, there's this social vibe to the day. There's this romantic to a certain extent even though the moon is in a space um the moon is in aquarius and with the moon in aquarius um it's squaring jupiter in taurus but at the same time it's positively aspecting venus and taurus so um the moon is in a place where to a certain extent we want to be social and connect with others but at the same time um because it's positively aspecting Venus, but with it squaring Jupiter in Taurus. Um, I think of how uh, Jupiter energy is so expansive and it brings light and attention to things. And with it in Taurus, I can see how the moon squaring uh, Jupiter in Taurus, meaning, you know, there's this whole social aspect to the day, but not really wanting to focus on anything too serious, too major. And I can see that with the energies in the day adding up and reducing to a number six vibration in the sense that some of us could find ourselves in social environments and connecting with others. And then when certain topics come up, it could feel like a bummer in the sense that, you know, I don't want to talk about my bills and responsibilities or adulting right now, or I don't want to think about adulting right now because with the energies it's so easy to start to feel as if you know like you're not doing enough even though you know that you're doing the best you can in this moment so that's one thing that comes to mind when i think of the square being made to the moon and the bear comes up as a spirit animal and i remember there was a time when the bear came up a lot and recently the bear has been coming up again with the bear coming up as a spirit animal, the bear brings me to structure and organization, seasons. The bear brings me to seasons, organization, stability, security. And with the way the bear energy comes out and the energies in the day, um, this feeling just brings me to the thought where it's like you're as prepared as you're going to be. You know, you're, you are as prepared in this moment as you're going to be like in this moment. Yes, you can plan for tomorrow, strategize for tomorrow, be more organized in however way you can. At the same time in this moment, you know, enjoy the moment, you know, enjoy the moment for what it is. Because with the energies in the day adding up and reducing to the number six vibration, like yes, it's a social and connected type of energy but at the same time it's so easy for us to you know find ourselves feeling like we're not doing enough reflecting on what we own and our titles and status and things like that so with this energy here it brings me to seasons and cycles and just reflecting and enjoy the season that you're in the season of your life that you're in when it comes to the tarot, we have the nine of swords in a reversal position. And I feel like this ties into the intuitive message that I was getting about today's day and just enjoying the season that you're in, in the upright position. You know, as you could see, this person is worrying about everything, anything, and probably nothing at all, but everything feels like such a big deal. It's the point that this person can't sleep. Instead of sleeping, they're up worrying about things that they probably have absolutely no control of because at this time in the night, there's nothing you could really do about anything. You know, and at this time in the night, yes, it might be beneficial to ease your mind and pull out a, a, a notepad and write down anything that, you know, like when it comes to the situation, because if you can't sleep already, when the when the energies is presented this way, you're already up, you can't sleep. It might be beneficial to pull out a notepad real quick and just jot down all of the possible solutions that comes to mind when it comes to your problem. And then remind yourself that in this moment, there's absolutely nothing I can do, but I've done everything that I think I could do as far as write down the possible solutions and tomorrow I'll address them. Because sometimes, you know, we'll lay there and could find ourselves up all night, pretty much until almost the next day, or some of us might pull out our smartphones or whatever and start watching something on YouTube or, you know, distract ourselves from what's happening. But, you know, in some situations, like I said, it might be beneficial to 
you know, acknowledge that this is what needs to be done or there's absolutely nothing I can do in this moment. So I'm going to challenge myself, force myself to relax and get some sleep. In the reversal position to me, it's like coming to that realization that I've done everything in my control and might as well, I just enjoy the moment for what it is. Like in this moment, I've done everything that I could possibly do. And since I've done everything that I could possibly do in this moment, it doesn't make sense for me to beat myself up about what I don't have and where I'm not and how I'd prefer to be somewhere else instead. In this moment, I've done everything that I can in my power. So, you know, it's important to give myself a break, to relax, you know, to find things about my current situation that I am appreciative of, find things about my life that I'm grateful for. So when I look at the energies in the day, it brings me to gratitude, the importance of being grateful for where you are and what you have, knowing that things could always be worse. And yes, for some of us, we could be doing so much better. And it's like, if that's something that you're aware of, then, you know, sit down and write down what it is that you want for yourself next and how could you be doing better and what are some things you could start doing today or yeah what are some things you could start doing today or each day in order to get towards that goal of whatever better is for you um but in the moment when we realize that you know you've done everything you can do today in your power you know the best thing to do is challenge yourself to chill and i know that seems easier said than done because for some of us, when it comes to the path that we're on, we might be at a certain season within our path. And that brings me to the bare energy dealing with seasons and cycles. We're at a certain season in our path, on our path, and there's absolutely nothing you can do but to keep maintaining what you've been doing because it's just not time yet to do anything. And when we look out into the world, it seems like everybody is getting successful overnight. Everybody is making huge moves. Everybody is ahead. And it's like, damn, you know, it's like, I need to do something, something, I need to do something. But at the same time, when it comes to your path and the experience that you wanna have, there might be absolutely nothing that you could do at this moment. And I've had plenty of moments where I'm doing everything that I could possibly be doing, but it feels like it's not enough because I look out and it just seems like, it just seems like it's not enough. It just seems like it's not enough. And that has nothing to, like that feeling of not enough, I feel like for me goes back to, you know, the second house, the Taurus energy in our chart, the Venus energy in our chart, what makes you feel worthy? What makes you feel worthy? And I was reflecting on the whole worthiness the other day or a lot lately in the past few days because I've been thinking about certain aspects of the chart. And I realized that like, yes, for me, you know, I remind myself that I'm worthy for the simple fact of my existence. But at the same time, when I think of like whatever planet, you know, whatever sign and planets are ruling your second house, and also to wherever, whichever house Taurus is in, in your chart, wherever Venus is, you know, that those things play a part when it comes to your self-worth, when it comes to what makes you feel worthy. And I think it's important for us to, um, when it comes to the things that make us feel worthy, um, it shouldn't be determined by people, places, or things. It's almost like something that we should be aware of. Um, what I mean by that is like, I think of like, say with my chart and like say Libra on my second house uh, cusp. And for me, and also to Venus and Virgo, for me, I feel worthy um, having integrity. Like it makes me, and it doesn't matter who knows. It doesn't matter who sees me doing whatever it is whatever is like as long as i know like it plays a part so i think of like say someone having aries there or aries energy is um uh, influenced by their venus you know they might feel worthy by 
um, being competitive. And when I say being competitive, it doesn't necessarily mean being in competition with other people. It might mean it's important for them to always be doing better than they were, than they've been doing, like always show some kind of progress or feel worthy because they know that like they're taking action and not being stagnant with Taurus. It might feel worthy by knowing that you're accomplishing things. You're creating security for yourself. Um, with Gemini, worthiness might come from, you know, learning new things and feeling confident when it comes to your way of communication and your ability to tap in and access information. Um, with Cancer, worthiness might come from being a good parent or nurturing something and a and thing, you know, nurturing a thing might be, I always give Jeff Bezos and bringing uh, Amazon from a thing in the garage to, you know, something that most of us use today. That thing was nurtured. You know, that's cancer energy. Um, uh, dealing with one's self-worth where I feel like, say, you know, a, a bad example of that self-worth might mean, okay, what our families think of us. So now someone else is determining whether we're worthy or not opposed to us realizing naturally we gravitate towards these things. So we're going to gravitate and focus on these things anyway. So why not, um, you know, why not pour more into these things or pour more into these things, but it's not controlled by anybody or anything outside of us, if that makes sense. You know, I think of Leo, creative expression, someone expressing themselves creatively or helping children or working with children, but it's on their own terms. I think of Virgo, you know, I got my Venus there. My self-worth might come from helping. I feel like those who have Virgo in that kind of position should get into a career where they're helping for a living, opposed to taking on people in their life as projects. I think of Libra. I mentioned Libra. For me, it's integrity. Um, for me, it's fairness and balance. Like those things make me feel worthy, not worthy to other people, but worthy to the creator. Like it makes me feel like I'm a good person. So because I'm a good person, good things are going to happen for me. And that might be a, a crack of BS, but in within me and the system that operates within me, it works and it makes sense. And yeah, it works and it makes sense. For me, I think of Scorpio, um, self-worth might come from having control over one's life, meaning, you know, for me, I have Pluto in the second house and I think Taurus also touches my eighth house a little. So for me, self-worth might come from me um, taking control over my life financially, being financially independent. That might be it for Scorpio. That makes them feel worthy, you know, having autonomy over their life, over their finances, being independent. Um a, a person's worth can come from. I, when it comes to say Sag, maybe someone's self worth might come from self worth might come from them educating themselves or educating others. Or I think of like a missionary, someone who travels and goes about to try to empower others and help them to become aware of other things that can empower them. I guess as my example of it, not as opposed to someone going and saying, you need to read this book and you need to follow this way. Um, but with Sag, you know, self-worth might come from, like I said, one exploring. I think of like Harry Potter and the Ravenclaw. To me, they could they would remind me of like Sag energy and uh, self-worth coming from that, where it's like they like to empower themselves by exploring and learning new things. And that's just for them. I think uh, when it comes to self-worth with Capricorn, being responsible, um, not necessarily taking on the responsibility of others and what others expect of you, but your ability to respond, meaning being in charge in some way, being some kind of an authoritative person in some way. So it's like I think of the person who starts the nonprofit or starts this thing where it's like they are responsible and helping, but they're doing it according to their own terms, based on what feels good and not what others tell them they should feel responsible for. When I think of Aquarius energy and self-worth, it might have to do with being free, um, you know, being free, coming and going and living 
life according to one's own terms unapologetically because even though Aquarian energy is known as this rebel that and this energy that deals with freedom a lot of the time with Aquarian energy and the whole ghosting aspect of it I believe that comes from the part of us that don't feel safe to be ourselves so we show up and we be what other people want us to be and then we end up ghosting them because it feels too much to wear that mask or to keep up that image. And then, you know, sometimes for some of us, it makes us feel like us being who we are, are not good enough. So when I think of self-worth with Aquarian energy, I think of someone who is um, helping, who is helping themselves and from them helping themselves and being an example of one being free and true to themselves. I feel like that could make a person feel worthy. When I think of Pisces energy, I think of one, you know, self-worth might come from a person healing others, but not with the focus and the intention to heal, but creatively expressing themselves and tapping into their creative energy and in the process of that, them doing that, it happens to be beneficial and helpful for others. With the Pisces energy, I think of the person who is the reader or the healer or whatever, but while they're reading and doing the healing work, it's not, oh, I need to go and heal these people because they need my help. No, it's my nature to tap into other realms and realities and in the process of me doing that, I'm expressing myself and people happen to say that I'm helping. So with me listing all those zodiac signs and the whole self-worth thing, I was just reflecting and thinking to myself how even though I'll say, yeah, my self-worth comes from the fact that I exist and not what I own or what I do for people, I realize that there is a system within me that keeps score. So like I was mentioning with me, it's like, it doesn't matter who's looking as long as I know. It's almost like, like I'm disappointing something in me if I go against that. You know, when I think of all the different, um, where Venus is in my chart and all the different ways how Venus energy influences worth, worthiness, value, and the whole self-worth aspect. And, you know, I just gave all that ran down talking about all that because today's energies in the day does add up and reduce to number six vibration and number six does deal with venus and a lot of the times you know with when that energy is operating in the lower frequency all that i mentioned about all the sign instead of it being this compass or this thing that we direct and determine based on within ourselves it's like a code that we all live by us all having a code inside of ourselves instead we make it external and it all comes from validation which is dangerous because whoever validates you owns you so when it comes to today's energy pluto goes in retrograde and pluto i think pluto will go in retrograde until um if i'm not mistaken i don't want to say september but like pluto is going to go in retrograde and it'll go back into capricorn for a little bit throughout the retrograde phase and I feel like while it's retrograding for the last time into Capricorn before it fully moves forward in Aquarius, I feel like this is going to help some of us to wrap up some loose ends in the sense that it's like you moved out of your home or your apartment and you thought you had everything and then now you have an opportunity to go back and to look around. So say your home or your apartment is super huge and there's hidden corners and things like that. And when you moved out, you kind of moved out in a rush and now you're having the opportunity to go back and revisit the space to make sure you didn't forget anything. I feel like for a lot of us, imagine that when it comes to your career, because with this transit, a lot of us probably transitioned careers or made up our mind to transition careers by start going to school for something or start learning about something else aggressively. And of course, you know, familiarity will feel safe even when it's destructive. So even when we're over the career that we're leaving from, um, for some of us, the thought of uh, 
the unknown when it comes to the new path is terrifying. So we might be entertaining the thought of going back because of the familiarity and the false sense of security that comes from it. And I feel like this retrograde energy will definitely help with that. Because when I think of like, say how Uranus energy in Taurus, when I think of Uranus energy in Taurus, I think of how there's this shift when it comes to finances and how some of us are making money where it's like, you know, for some of us, we transition from a space of it's like you're trading your time for money as far as, you know, you put an hour in and you're getting paid this much an hour or whatnot. You know, some people transitioned and the money is coming in differently. It's looking different the way it's coming in. And that could be terrifying. That could be scary to the point that some people are wondering if they should go back to the old way and go back to the old way just because of fear. And as I mature and as time goes by, I'm learning that if fear is the reason why I want to make a decision, then clearly that's not the right decision to make. If I'm making it from a place of fear in the moment, it's different if I'm inspired to look at a certain path. But if fear is pushing me over there or if fear is making me do this, that or the next, hands down for me, the consequences of take, making that decision due to fear is going to put me deeper into a situation that's going to be like just more fear more fear is going to come from all that but jupiter is the ruler of the day and jupiter is a part of a trine between mars and aries conjuncts neptune and also pluto and aquarius which goes in retrograde so when i look at the positive aspect being made i think of pluto energy which is transformative and it's at two degrees so transformative as far as the groups we're associating ourselves with transforming our public image of course, if our public image is being transformed, so is our career. I think of like someone entering into a career of being a, um, a creative and now you're hanging out with other creatives. So it's like if our public image is changing, of course, our goals and ambition. And that's positively aspecting Mars and Aries, us motivated by ourselves and Neptune there, you know, optimistic and not even optimistic, but visualizing ourselves in a certain way visualizing our ideal path and things like that and then jupiter and taurus bringing luck and opportunity when it comes to security and stability or feeling optimistic enough about it to manifest that so when i look at the positive energies in the day it does bring me to the importance of you know when it comes to this moment recognizing that like you are where you're supposed to be and if you don't feel that way then how what could you do to get to where you think you should be but i believe that i am where i'm supposed to be in each moment because each moment is a prereq preparing me for the next and when it comes to say you know challenges venus and taurus is squaring pluto in aquarius and with pluto in aquarius squaring venus i think of like you know value security and stability and from the value of familiarity, you know, the change, the change that's necessary is terrifying. And when I think of a Korean energy, how it deals with friend groups and connecting with others, it brings me to that saying that the creator blesses us through others. So we have to be open to making new connections and networking and things like that, because those also come with good blessings. I think of that song, No New Friends, and how at one point it sounded cool when really no new friends means no new blessings, means no new opportunities because the creator blesses us through others. And if we find that every time we make connections and people come into our world, it's always dis dis destructive, they're always deceptive and things like that, that's an opportunity for us to reflect in to see what's happening within us why we open the door for certain kind of people because i believe we attract all kind of people and for whatever reason we feel safer to invite certain people in while we reject others so i feel like every opportunity is one for us to reflect deeper and understand ourselves and our internal programming as to why we show up and invite the things in that we do in certain cases and reject certain things that are good for us and a lot of the times that might be because we don't think we're good enough for the things that are good for us 
and the things that aren't, you know, we feel are, are worth. It goes back to self-worth again. It was such a pleasure sharing this message with you. Hey guys, I want to share with you seven benefits of getting a numerology natal chart awareness coaching session. The first one is understanding your internal programming. The second one is becoming more clear about your purpose and passion. The third is setting goals for success. The fourth is awareness of strength and areas of improvement. And the fourth one was foundational for me because whenever you're aware of your weaknesses, no one can use them against you. And when you're aware of your strengths, that makes you unstoppable. And that is why I say self-awareness is a superpower. The fifth benefit is removing obstacles. We first have to become aware of a thing in order to remove it in the first place. The sixth benefit is understanding relationship dynamics. We don't have to change the people in our lives. We have to become aware of ourselves and start from there and everything changes. And the seventh benefit is upcoming transits. If that's something that you would like to look into because you're planning for something or you just want to be aware. So if you're interested in booking a numerology natal chart awareness coaching session or learning more about it, the link to book or the link to send me an email for questions are both within the description box below. If you'd like to check out my Patreon where I share exclusive content and also to become a part of the meetup group, which is my favorite thing on Patreon. The link to check out what's happening on Patreon is in the description box below. Please let me know you're here with me by dropping me a white heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.